What's up, Solid Steppers? This Miss Ward coming to you from Georgia. Right now, I'm shooting out to Jacksonville. Got to knock out some stuff over there. Having a great day. You know, I was just thinking about, you know, I need you guys to take a moment and uh, think about when you do jobs, where are your tools? Are they easily accessible? Like in your brain, okay, I need my 5'8", my half inch. I'm getting ready to go work on a dishwasher. I may have to uninstall some lines. Do I know exactly where those are? Now, depending on what you work on, some of us work on everything from refrigeration to ovens, stoves, dishwashers, you know, seal systems. So me, I kind of have a bag for each, uh, you know, like some things, like specialized things. Like if I'm doing washers, I got a bag that got like my uh, pliers to take loose the hoses for the washers, the washer hose pliers. I got the uh, pliers for the um, different boots, things like that. And then I have my standard stuff. Now, of course, I do have a bag that I have generally everything in. But I am so specific about being very light when I go in and when I come out. So it's very important that you take a moment to pace yourself, number one. And number two, think about the supplies you need to service the customer and go in with them. Say, uh, you know, I just did a dishwasher. I made sure I had Teflon tape because you know how it is, guys. We go in and we might turn the water off so we can remove the line to pull the unit out if it's not long enough. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to be so careful because a lot of these homes are built with that, uh, you know, those plastic uh, plumbing items that break if you damn touch it. So you always got to have your cutoffs and things like that. You know, when you're going to work on, like me, I do a lot of Samsung, so I always make sure I have, uh, you know, my sensors, you know, the general sensors I use on it, and, uh, you know, my uh, splicers if I'm putting in a secondary heater or something of that nature. Uh, if I have my GEs, when I go work on any GE product, I always have my Smart HQ because, you know, I try to get that information from the customer ahead of time so I'm prepared. My goal is to be able to do one-stop completions, pre-diag through uh, triage, uh, and make sure I have the parts that are related to the symptoms and the issues the customer's doing, having. That way I can knock everything out in the first stop. I think that's really the key to success in appliance repair. You know, people doing multiple stops, you only do those if you have to. Like I had one of my guys in Savannah, he had to go check out an LG first because, you know, LG will get you. You know, they'll get you all day long because, you know, it's an LG wash, uh, dishwasher not starting. And if you've worked on these LG products before, you know that you want, the first thing you're checking is that noise filter. Afterwards, you're going to go check the board to see if you got power coming you know to the board coming from the board to the ui it's like a pretty simple check and uh lg offers uh great service manuals to kind of walk you through that process but there are some things that are unique but also those parts are very expensive i'm not going to send a guy out there with a user interface that's 300 dollars, a board that's 350 and a noise filter like that might be a buck 50 you know so at the end of the day you got to know what you're doing and how you're troubleshooting and how to approach each job. Some jobs are more than one, like if the customer's very vague, you can't get enough information from them to pre-diag, you go out, but you make sure that you're doing it on a day that's gonna be profitable, so you can cover the cost of that extra stop, you know, with only the service charge. Whenever I move in business, I'm moving strategic, as strategic as I possibly can. You know, I get calls on installs, I generally stay away from those, uh, because those aren't profitable enough for the way that I move, but I'm not knocking anybody to do one, any because I know if I did installs only, oh, it'll be off the chain for me. That's how I see it. And the reason I see it that way is because when you're dealing with um, installs, you can get a system in place and you could just master that no matter what appliance, what uh, unit you're running in. I know some guys, they specialize in installing suites only, meaning the washer, the dryer, the entire kitchen, the microwave, the oven, the stove, the uh, refrigerator, and the dishwasher, they making a killing. You know, they making a killing because they going in and they just, they knocking out the game from front to back. And if people can buy a package deal and you install all that, I'm sure the negotiation has to be golden because there's a lot of people that don't offer that. You know, they don't, they don't 
focus on the packages. I know a lot of guys that deal directly with builders and they installing those packages from the builders, you know, especially on the high end. I mean, every area has a niche. The game is to get in and find your niche and, and be the best at it. But any way you approach appliance repair, you just gotta have a plan. And every time, like with me, every time I leave a job, you know, I make sure if it's COD, I'm getting paid. If it's warranty, you know, time I'm pulling off from the job, I'm basically wrapping up the warranty paperwork right then. You know, completed, submitted, done. Because my whole goal is to be as efficient as possible when I'm out here in the field, so that when I'm not in the field, I can focus on other parts of the business that I have to be in administratively. Whether it be the business credit, the profile, you know, we've expanded in multiple states, so that's a whole situation in itself. Just, you know, recruiting and getting people prepared to work in those areas. You know, my biggest concern coming up actually is the areas with snow because even though I personally have lived in Seattle and North Carolina and Atlanta when it snowed, um, it's just a different dynamic. There are certain places like, for instance, New Mexico, they got monsoons and they got snowstorms. It's like insanity to me. But at the end of the day, you got to realize how you're going to go to business. How are you going to go to business? And then you got to have things in place so that when you do, you don't have a problem. Like me, I only take specific jobs that are going to be profitable to make sure it takes care of the expenses to complete them, you know, from transportation to parts, you know, whatever is involved with that. Most people, when they go to business, they don't think that because they, they can barely, like, they serve in their own neighborhood. They might have been in a radius of five miles. They don't know how to maximize those that five-mile radius they care of covering. So how are you going to uh, master it in multiple states? But it depends on how much growth you want as a person and as a boss. You know, it's not really that hard. It's really the same thing, the same energy it takes me to cover my city, you know, or to cover south florida or to cover south florida central florida or the state of florida is the same energy believe it or not it takes me to cover the other uh states that i cover i'm very clear about that so you know for me it's a no-brainer step up to the plate and step out it's that simple with that said you guys enjoy your saturday right now i'm leaving uh valdosta right now i'm headed out to jacksonville and then uh, from Jacksonville, I should be handed over to Ferdinand Beach or Kingsland. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to go first. Just depending on uh, my clientele and if they're going to allow me to come early. I actually have them scheduled for tomorrow, but as much as I can get done today, that's what I'm going to do. You know, and that's another thing y'all got to think about. You got to be flexible and you got to be fluid because when opportunity knocks, you got to go knock that shit out of the park. And you know, most of you guys aren't disciplined. You know, most people aren't disciplined enough to focus on something long enough to see the niches, to see the whole loopholes, and to get through and make it happen. They too busy worrying about their personal stuff when it's a distraction. All that stuff you worry about is going to be there. The key is, is it building your brand? Is it building your business? Is it filling your pocket so you can use that money to invest in, in passive cash flow systems where you don't have to work as hard? Trust me, I was just talking to a customer. Early, my first customer this morning has multiple properties. They just bought like 7.5 acres in Perry, Florida. Like people buying up land life left and right. When I tell you they buying up land, they buying it up left and right. He's telling me about land he got in a certain place uh, in Texas. He can't even sell it, he says. He can't sell it because he says it's on a uh, cartel highway, whatever that is. So I'm not going to get into that. I don't know nothing about Texas. I ain't even trying to be out there like that. But uh, <laughs> you never know. That's all I'm going to say. But with that said, y'all, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all weekend. You know I'm out here coasting and picking up bags left and right from state to state, coast to coast. That's how we do it. Y'all have a great day. Like, share, and subscribe. And give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either way, it helps the algorithm. Be blessed and stay focused. And remember, be the best you, you, you can be. Don't worry about me. You know, if you invest in yourself, 
and, and focus on your, your strong points and limit your weaknesses, sky's the limit. Get away from the distractions, people.